Hi, I'm Ed Stone. I've known Cliff and Sally Brody since the early 70s. Um, we've had wonderful, wonderful history together. Lots of laughs, few, few tears. They have been the most loyal friends anybody could ask for. And when there's a crisis, they were there. When there's a lot of fun, they were there. Cliff did such a fabulous job in setting up the village. Sally being his backup man. Then when the Ass Club got started, they were our original supporters. They could do nothing more than they could do. We used to think that we had the whirling dervish with Sally when she'd come in from the, for the winter, do our duties, do our jobs, and then she would take off in the bus or the van or the boat or whatever it was and we'd look forward to her coming back. This year, she's been here full time. It's been unbelievable. If you just look at the Islander, she's in there every week. The fidgets have been fantastic. So we're just delighted that they're going to have a new chapter in their lives. I have to be very careful in letting you go because that is the purpose of the S Club, not to leave. But you've certainly helped so many of us want to stay here. And I want to stay. So thank you for helping us. And again, thanks for all your support. You're good people. Thanks. Hi, Cliff and Sally. Just uh, a few words to thank you for all the wonderful things you did for this village. A lot of people don't know your passion, your dedication, the amount of time you gave to this village. Not only your time, but also your office. I remember when I was working with you when I started in 88, that your office was village central. Everybody went over there to lobby to become our attorneys or to make photocopies for the back then village council or to have meetings. I mean, it was unbelievable. I learned so much from you and Sally. It was so great meeting you. And I always admire your dedication to the Cubes Game kids in school. You were a wonderful teacher. My youngest son had the honor of having you as a teacher. And I remember how great you were. I have so many good memories of both of you. I remember that first election when we were at the Key Biscayne Elementary School in the auditorium, and we were listening anxiously to the results. And I remember when Cliff was first elected to our first village council. This is just a thank you to both of you and my appreciation and admiration for both of you with all my love. Thank you. When we started the incorporation effort, the county was doing all of our services for us because we had no staff. And that worked out okay, except in the zoning department, the building zoning. You're looking at the first building and zoning director of the village of Key Biscayne, which means she was the first building and zoning director of Key Biscayne. I think that on this date, August 16th, 2018, that I should be recognizing you, Mr. Brody, for one of the most important decisions and one of the most important actions you and fellow members of the early councils took when you decided to become your own fire service community. Cliff, without your guidance, without your forethought, without your vision moving forward, this would be a very, very different community. What you saw, what you demanded, what you felt the community expected, and what you weren't receiving all tie into one of the most successful fire services anywhere in the country. We just received a week ago our fifth recognition as an accredited agency, and there are only three other international fire services that have that distinction. We owe a lot to you. I personally owe a lot to you, but I wanna begin and I wanna end by thanking you. Thanking you for having this vision Thank you for being patient. Thank you for continuing and giving me guidance. But more importantly, because you have always kept this community foremost in everything that you've done. So let's move forward. Let's move forward together. Let's enjoy our time here and let's enjoy our time when we see each other again. But always remember deep down in my heart, you meant a lot. You meant a lot to me. And I will never be able to thank you enough. Thank you, Cliff. Cliff made everything work. Residents of Key Biscayne, the voters of Key Biscayne, had to really vote in blind faith that this was going to be a good idea and it was going to work. And of course, we all live and enjoy the results of that. I'd just like to mention- Cliff and Sally, how are you?
So it's August in South Florida and you're leaving. That shouldn't be a surprise. And I hope that you're not leaving for a long time, but I know you're always adventuring. Uh, you know that the fire department has uh, a special place in our hearts for the Brodies, and I'm pretty sure that uh, you got one for us as well. 25 years we've been here, standing behind me, and you were part of it, and we asked you to be, uh, come in for a photograph uh, for our 25th year anniversary truck. Uh, 1993, October 1st, we took over service. I myself happened to start with many other people uh, August 16th, and as you remember, John Gilbert was hired uh, back in May, and Bill Huddleston a little bit before that. Uh, I personally can't thank you enough, and I know that we've run thousands and thousands of calls. We've touched thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of lives, uh, and that I think the best gift that you can ever give is the ones that you don't even know that you make. And I can assure you that your influence on creating this fire department, your influence on the village, touched lives beyond your belief. Good friend Ray, uh, you know the great story around his grandson, uh, and uh, hopefully we touched your back. Um, the inspiration for that, I don't know if you remember this, but there's a guy named T.O. Sykes, and he was a volunteer. And someone just posted about him on Facebook. And it says right here, Honorary Chief Key Biscayne. I understand he passed away not too long ago, and somebody brought this fire helmet in, one of his family members, Ron, gave it to Ron Herbal, he brought it in. And I think it's when I saw this, I said, we need to do that. We need to make an honorary fire chief of you and Ray Sullivan. Uh, we had the honor of doing that. As everyone knows, behind uh, every great man, there's an amazing woman. So for you, Sally, I'm sporting my pink, okay? And uh, we love you, and uh, I will not be able to be there on, uh, on Friday, and I apologize uh, for that. Uh, but most importantly, on behalf of me, uh, the men and women of this fire department, and the community we serve, we thank you. I just want to show you a little bit of what you started, because I'm one example. If I could ask Tom Dunphy just to come in here. Uh, this is a future leader. He's been here for 12 years. And I got one of our younger guys, uh, Eric Lampert. I like his name, by the way. Eric, he's only been here about, about a year. Sally, easy, easy. So uh, we love you, and, uh, and I guarantee you this department will continue to serve this community, and thank you for that legacy. Hey, good evening, Cliff, Sally. Um, I have to tell you, uh, 14 years ago, and maybe a little bit more, uh, I became the police chief here on the Key, and I remember going around the community, and I went to the Yacht Club for the very first time. I was walking around the Yacht Club, and then I went outside because I love boats. There were these two people in a boat, shouted at me, said, hey, you must be the new police chief in town. And uh, before I knew it, I was uh, sitting on your boat, and you were offering me things that I couldn't drink while I was on duty, but you made me feel like I had known you forever. Cliff, you just made me feel at home. Throughout the years, I've had my supporters like we all do. I said, you know, two people like you, you have always been there for me and you have always supported me. You've supported our foundation and you've supported our police department. But on a personal level, I have always felt that there are some unique people that we all tend to meet in life uh, and they remind us of people that we love. I always looked at you two and you reminded me so much of my mom and pop. Um, you still do. So, so anyway, sorry for that little short emotional moment, um, but that's how I feel about you guys. Key Biscayne will never be the same without you. I can leave and many of us can leave, uh, but when two people like you who have done so much in this community and so much for this community when you leave, uh, you will leave a legacy uh, that really can't be replaced. Godspeed on your future and where you're going. I'll miss you guys. Uh, you ever want to call up Sally and talk dirty to me like you like to do, that's fine with me too. I hope your rest of your life is just as blessed as it's been so far. Have a great one. Sally and Cliff, we're going to miss you guys. You've been such an instrumental part of this community and personally in my life uh, so important from a young age with Miss Brody as my teacher. 
Uh, we didn't realize at the time when we went out as a class to protest the cutting down of trees what it meant in the bigger picture. Later in life I realized how important that was on, on many fronts. Um, and then having the ability to work with Cliff um, through the foundation and finding out what a treasure he's been to so many things we've accomplished and so many lives. Um, and Sally, fidget blankets have more views than anything we have on YouTube. So thank you guys. We're going to miss you. You always have family and friends here. We love you. I had the good fortune to teach with Sally for about 10 years before she retired in 1996. Classwork was always important to Sally, but she taught the whole child. She challenged the kids and had the ability to make them dig deep and have their imagination come up. Education should help students progress by relating education to the total community. This helps students relate things they learn in the classroom to life in general. Sally was a master at this. Sally was known for involving her students in a host of community activities. Her commitment to her beloved Kibis Kane was evident through her protection of the environment. She involved her children in beach cleanups, sand restoration, and dune planting. She started an active recycling. Sally encouraged the students to fall in love with their environment. They will continue to protect it long after they leave the classroom. Sally organized food collections from different charities to teach the kids to give back. She organized garage sales so that less fortunate students could always have what they needed. She involved them in a planning charrette for the village of Kibis Kane. She accompanied them to space camp and sea camp to learn more about the world around them. By example, her dedication to the community of Kibis Kane taught generations of young people what it really means to be a contributing member of society. The village of Kibis Kane is a better place today because of Sally Brody. Thank you. Hey, roll it. Sally, Cliff Brody, don't leave us. We're going to miss you so much. Thank you for all the so many years of work you've done for the village of Kibis Kane, for the Kibis Kane Yacht Club, Lighthouse Run, and most especially for me, the Memorial Scholarship Dinner in memory of my daughter Eileen. So much you've given to all of us. We're going to miss you terribly. It's the west coast of Florida's gain and our loss. Good work, good thoughts to you both. I enjoy a lot, you know, uh, when we used to race with uh, Ray Sullivan, you know, these mm -hmm. nice races. And uh, hopefully to see you soon. And uh, we'd like to take you guys for another trip in the boat. And I do thank the village and also the council for helping us so much getting this started. And to see the emotion and passion that they put into each one of these blankets, that in itself is amazing to me. I'm so glad to have participated in the fidget blanket because this is how I got to know Sally Brody. It's very special. Yes, and thank you, Sally. Thank you for all the work that you have done. I have certainly seen it. I mean, you call people, you want to know are they coming, you get people to donate, you get people to order things and pick up things for us. It's just been amazing, big job, and I want you to know how much we appreciate it. Thank you, Sally. Hello, everyone. Hello, Sally. Hello, Cliff. Uh, this is kind of a bittersweet moment for me. Um, you have both been such a integral part of this community. I don't think anyone who's been around for a while thinks of Key Biscayne without associating the two of you um, with everything that has gone on and that goes on presently here. Um, we will miss you. It will be a huge loss. I've been here many years and I know very few people that I consider memorable. And Sally, you are one of a kind. 
um, you have an infectious energy, a passion for everything you tackle that you try to pass on whether people want it or not. And I know that the people in Fort Myers don't actually have an idea what's coming for them. Um, it is a huge loss for us, but it will be an incredible gain uh, for them. I wish you both lots of luck. I hope that you don't forget this little island. And from the very, very bottom of my heart, I thank you for working with us and for just showing us what, you know, growing older and being active and staying involved and engaged and being passionate about life itself looks like. I'll miss you. Cliff and Sally, thank you so much for all that you've done for this community. It's a better place because of it. I couldn't list everything that you've done because it would take all night, but I thought I'd focus on a couple things. Uh, Cliff always warned me to be careful when saying yes to Sally, but it's almost impossible to say no. I think he knows this better than most, and it's also rarely advised. But Sally brings such a vibrant, jovial passion to everything she does. She's willing to give of her own time and talent. Thank you so, so much for everything you've done and everything we've got to work on. My only comment would be that maybe Melissa McCon White could have benefited from a little bit more discipline when she was your student. Cliff, this community's best attributes reflect yours. Your efforts to better this community are so extensive. I would like to focus on one attribute of yours in particular. Um, you're a no-nonsense problem solver who takes great satisfaction in tackling difficult issues and taking no credit for doing so. I often think about in 2000. 13 when the great dog park debate was tearing apart this community you reached out to Bill Fair and I and said can you take a look at the village green north Bill and I were skeptical we went out there with you we walked it we measured it out and lo and behold a dog park could fit there and an issue that was really tearing at this community was solved you never took credit for it and it was well deserved so thank you so much it's also been great to work with you on freebie and line bike i'll never forget when we got the reports from the different bicycle groups i called you first and you said why are we meeting one is so much better than the rest we never reconvened our committee we proceeded with that recommendation and we've never turned back so thank you for giving your time on that natalia and i have decided who we most want to be like when we grow up is sally and cliff brody the adventures you've had the lives you've lived, if we could only be so lucky. Thank you so much, and I look forward to staying in touch. Come on. Hi, Sally and Cliff. I um, want you to know I didn't get dressed up for you, Sally. I know you think I probably did, but as you can see, I'm here in the council chambers, and we're just about to have a meeting, so you get the benefit of my very, very rare jacket. You and Sally have been so many things, not only to the community, but to us. You've been great friends. You've been great comrades in arms. You've been service in every conceivable way. And to list them would take more than the two minutes that I'm told that I have. And there's Melissa making a face at me. I just have to tell about a few memories that will always stick in my mind when I think of you guys. Trips to the Bahamas that we used to have, and you, Cliff, were always the guide. Um, even though you had the slowest boat, you always got there first, you staked out the place, and you always gave great directions as far as how to find you. I'll never forget the time, I think it was in the Abacos, and you told me, well, all you have to do is go about 40 miles up the coast and look for the Casarita tree, or Casarica tree, or whatever it is, and then go in toward shore. Well, I got about 40 miles up shore, and I asked Elaine, I said, do you know what a Casarica tree is? And I said, she said, no, well, I don't either. Somehow or another, we finally found you guys. It was a great time. I'll never forget, obviously, the incorporation and all the battles that we fought together. And some of the things I found out about you, Cliff, I think we were in the school cafeteria making one of our many presentations. And we had a multicolored chart of the boundaries of what the village would look like when we were going to be incorporated and you were there pointing out various things and I said to the group, it was a very large group, now if you will look at the green part of the chart, and everybody started giggling and I'm going, what's so funny? I mean, did I, what? Anyway, I turn around and you're pointing to yellow and yellow is Crandon Park. Green was the uh, boundaries for what our village would look like. It was then and there, after all the years I've known you, that you, I realized you were colorblind. 
And then I thought about all the times I followed you through re green and red markers, not knowing you were colorblind, and wondered how we ever survived it. But we somehow did. I'll never forget the time, Sally, you came up to me. I think it was going to be an especially big meeting. Maybe it was a debate. And you came up to me and you said, are you nervous? You look nervous. You really look nervous. Are you nervous? And I said, well, not really, Sally. Why? Well, what if they don't believe you? What if they don't think you're telling the truth? What if they don't think they like what you have to say? You, you look nervous. And I said, well, Sally, I am now. Thank you very much. <laughs> the only one that ever made me nervous, Sally, is you. But that was also a lot of fun. I could go on and on and on. All I can say is you guys have been about as big of a part of Key Biscayne as anyone that's ever lived out here from the village to the yacht club where you were so involved from Commodore and all the way down to the foundation board and all the projects that you all have taken on together and it's just been a great ride every bit of it's been great fun enjoyable and I'm not going to say we're going to miss you because I know exactly how to get you guys back here. Remember times when you were in Vermont or Colorado and there was a big party going on? Every single time we would get a phone call from Sally wanting to know are we having a good time? What is she missing? Does anybody miss her? Blah, blah, blah. Well, it got to be so funny that we would be in a group sitting on the back patio of the uh, yacht club and we would make up a party and we would just call Sally to let her know that we're having a great time and it's a great party and we wish you were here. She'd go crazy. So all we have to do to get you guys back anytime, call up and say there's a party. I know you'll be here. We love you guys. It's been incredible being your friend, your comrade, your partners, and we hope we'll still have many, many times to come. Thanks for everything. My husband Ed and I met Sally and Cliff a little over three years ago when Pickleball came to Key Biscayne Community Center. And from that time on, I have been caught up in Sally's energy vortex of helping with bingo, doing fidget blankets. Uh, she's been fostering kittens for me for our trap, neuter, and return program. It's been a great joy meeting both her and Cliff, and we wish them the best of luck in all their adventures ahead. In all the decades that I've lived here, I'm ashamed to say that I never got involved with community affairs until I met Sally and Cliff three years ago. And I have been so inspired by their volunteerism. And now they're leaving, and it's going to leave a tremendous void. There are a lot of people like myself I have never really gotten involved, and we need to step up and fill that void. If I can do one fraction of what they did, I will be thrilled. I'm gonna miss them terribly. This is the second bus coming, and I do appreciate our veterans, as many of us do. We're really happy with everybody here. Right, Cliff? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, a great bunch of people. Okay, I came down to work on the charter fishing boats. It just happens that Cliff Brody's father, his family had a boat behind the charter boats called the War Cliff. And they named it Warcliffe because they had two sons, Warren and Clifford. It's his mother loved fishing, and she loved the sun, and she was tanned like leather. <laughs> she just loved every bit of it. She'd go out in a little bonefish boat and bonefish on the flats, be the only one out there pulling the boat and catching bonefish. We introduced Sally to Cliff and said, wouldn't that be a great couple? <laughs> And they're still together today, and that was years ago. And that Sally's a real pistol. Sally, Cliff, I just want to share some of my favorite memories of our wonderful times together. We laughed so much and had so much fun. Our anniversary party was a total surprise. When the bus appeared in the front yard, I looked out and I saw something red. I thought for a minute it was a fire truck. Children were all out there and everybody was excited. I looked out and realized it was a bus. About that time, Sally comes running in the front door, says, get ready, get ready, we're going on the bus. She went up to our closet, yanked a pair of pants down for George and said, put these on. 
Uh, my son was carrying me out the front door when the bus first arrived, and I, and I wasn't ready to go, and he picked me up and carried me out. I said, I can't go out there, I'm not dressed. That's when we had to go back in and get dressed. And so it was a total 100% surprise and wonderful. So we finally got dressed in a real hurry. It was such a fantastic experience. Another memory that I have is when George was 50 and we had been out to dinner and we arrived home to find our front door barricaded. Uh, we couldn't even get in. When we moved barricades and were able to get in the house, all over were posters insulting him about being 50 years old. Everywhere, there must have been about 50 posters throughout our house. Toilet paper strung up in the kitchen. Uh, notes under our pillows, even writing on the toilet paper roll when we unrolled it, all kinds of very funny and insulting remarks about his age. It was hilarious. Really major memory that I have is when one Saturday you came by the house and saw George putting a pelican on a piling at our dock. He had always thought it'd be really nice to have a pelican sitting there. So he put it, attached it to the piling with the cable. That night, we went to our dinner club party at Jim Peters' house on Mashta Island. During the evening, Cliff and Sally disappeared. We actually didn't notice that you were gone. We had a wonderful time at the party. We came home. The next morning, I looked out the kitchen window and I saw that the pelican was missing. So I called George and I said, the pelican's gone. And he immediately said, the Brodies, the Brodies, they left the party last night. We went out to get the Sunday paper at the front door and there was a, a manila envelope with a ransom note in it with a picture of the pelican with hammers of, above its head and threats to demolish, attack our pelican if we did not send X amount of money, I can't remember how, what it was, a certain address. It was really, really funny. You had cut out the letters from magazines to make the ransom note. So funny. Well, anyway, George threatened all kinds of things that he was going to do to get back at you. The first thing he thought he might do is take off your front door by the hinges. But he actually didn't do that. I guess I discouraged him from that. And I can't remember what we did, but it went back and forth for about a month and uh, with all the threats. Finally, uh, the pelican was delivered to our house in a huge box by UPS or mail or something. We finally got our pelican back. That was absolutely the funniest thing experience I think we've had in our relationship with you through these years. We had so much fun rafting up at Elliott Key for weekends down there and Bimini rendezvous. Uh, you invited us to sail with you on the Sally Ann to the Abacos along with Pat and Alvin Mars for a week and that was a fabulous trip. What the thing that really I want to thank you for, and I was very touched by your arranging to have a bench put at the Yacht Club in George's memory after he passed away. You wanted to do something special, so you called friends and collected donations to get a bench for George. You were even able to find a plaque that had a pelican on it and it was placed at the Yacht Club. Several of my family members were there on the day of the unveiling of the bench, and um, all of the people who contributed to it were there. That bench has meant so much to me through these years, and when my grandchildren come, they all want to go and sit on Grandpa's bench. So that is a beautiful, emotional, and loving memory and wonderful thing that you did. So many times through these years you have been so supportive to me and to my entire family in times of need and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you Cliff for uh, your contribution to the key by serving on the council and all the 
great things you've done for the benefit of Kibis Game. I love you both, and well, we'll come and visit you wherever you are. Hi, Mom and Dad. This is a really amazing evening tonight to celebrate you guys and all the service that you have provided to Kibis Game, the little coconut grove island it was when Dad and you both moved there to the beautiful place that it is preserved to be today. Thank you guys as my parents to tell you how amazing you guys have been as examples in the community. You have taught me and Joel how to give back to people in our own communities. Keep us game will just never be the same without you guys and move on to your new location feeling very proud and knowing that you are loved. Love you mom and dad. Bye. Thank you, Sally. You are the best. As number one teacher, you passed the test. You have shared with kids your knowledge. You've taught them more than they could ever learn in college. As we gather here tonight, we thank God for Sally Bright. You are such an inspiration. Thank you kindly for your years of dedication.